A new report with the headline, Democratic elites struggle to get voters as excited about Biden as they are. Ouch. Former Democrat Senator Dennis DeConcini says, Democrats just don't have any choice. He may be too old and stumble a bit. The problem is that Democrats really have a problem if he didn't run because Vice President Kamala Harris, I don't think she could be elected. We're kind of stuck with Biden because of that, end quote. Shermichael Singleton, host of the Shermichael Singleton Show on Sirius XM. Kevin Walling, former Biden campaign surrogate. All right, Shermichael, I'll start with you and your take on what we just heard. Yeah, I mean, look, Harris, I'll simply say a lot of Americans look at the president and they feel he's out of touch. And, you know, I was joking with some friends earlier today, Harris, about this very topic. And one buddy of mine said it's like comparing a cassette tape to Spotify. It's just not going to cut it. And so the point that he was trying to make, which is a point that I think many Americans feel, is that they want someone who's younger, who's more relatable, someone who understands the struggle of everyday Americans. Joe Biden's been in office for 40 years. He says he, had all, he has all of the answers to fix all of the problems. And yet in 40 years, the same Mm -hmm. problems continue to persist. In fact, Harris, they've even gotten worse. I think it's closer to 50, but we'll do our homework on that one to get an exact <laughs> number. Uh, Kevin Walling, do you agree with what Senate, former Senator DeConcini had to say about what your choices are? It's Joe Biden because Kamala can't get it done. Well, listen, I think the president has done a, a remarkable job of uniting the Democratic base uh, in support of his uh, reelection in 2024. And I don't give a lot of credence, uh, Harris, to national polls. If I if I did, Donald Trump would never have been elected president and we'd have a 40 seat, 50 seat majority for Republicans in the House of Representatives. Listen, elections aren't held in vacuums where, you know, you have this ideal candidate running. The president is going to be likely running against Donald Trump. And I've got a majority of Americans that say that Joe Biden's too old for the job. I understand that. But the same majority of Americans think that Donald Trump has committed serious felonies against the United States. So I'm happy to back the guy that Americans think might be too old for the job over the guy that they think should be in prison right now. Harris, can I jump in quickly Absolutely. Here? So, uh, you know, to, to all fairness to, to what Kevin just stated, many Americans also believe that Donald Trump would do a better job on issues such as the economy. Mm -hmm. It's why when you look at that recent uh, Wall Street Journal poll where 60 percent of participants said, hey, I don't like the economy under Joe Biden. I liked it better under Donald Trump. And then when they asked, well, how do you feel about some of the alleged things that have been accused of the former president? I don't really care because I want to be able to take care of my family and put gas in my car. And so I think Kevin's a little off on this one. Kevin, you know, it is difficult. Yeah. Well, let me just get this out. It is difficult yeah. for people to see a president who doesn't seem to see them. He says, watch mm -hmm. me, but he doesn't say I'm watching all of you too and I feel your pain. Is he even aware that there is pain, that prices are now creeping back up as they have been all along? Harris, it's an excellent point, and I actually agree with Shermichael. I think we've got to do a better job of connecting with the American people on the economy. We can't just talk about statistics and the fact that, you know, the job situation is the best it's ever been in 50 years, that inflation is down from that 9 percent it ticked up, as you just talked about with Vivek Ramaswamy, Harris, but we're working on those issues. And I do think there is a disconnect when you look at polling. Uh, and that's why I think you saw the president on Labor Day talking to that union in Philadelphia saying, you know, Donald Trump is the only president in over 100 years to leave office with less uh, jobs on the books than when he started. And I think that that's you're going to see more of that contrast message come November. All right, shake your head. Ten seconds for Michael. Yeah, jobs is not a good metric, Harris. Most people can find a job, but the wages haven't increased with inflation. That's a good so, thing. Yeah, for this I have country. a job, but I'm not that able the to pay for my rent or my mortgage. That's not a good thing, Kevin. That's a terrible. The good thing, thing that people can Joe find Biden's jobs record. that are well paying and the All wages right. are up. Well, look, but they're not up, the, my friend. The 13 and you know million, that. most of them are putbacks from the from the. Uh, coronavirus COVID pandemic. pandemic. That's and, right. right. So we, we know that. And if the jobs, wages are not new. keeping up with inflation, that is a problem, mm -hmm. Kevin. And that is one of those non-transparencies that we're getting out of the White House. And you're furthering that by saying that out loud. You know that you need more money now to buy the same stuff, Absolutely. particularly if the That's stuff true. includes That's true. And we're working on that. And we're working on that, Harris. Joe right. Biden's been working on it, Harris, for 50 years. He hasn't solved it yet. I think it's time to move in a new direction. Ooh, okay. You guys... <laughs> Buy each other a burger. I know you like we each other. We always do. He's I my know buddy. you do. Thank you very much for the debate. Thanks, Harris. Thanks, uh, Harris.